Hello and welcome to Technology Tuesday. Today, we wanted to delve into the topic of component protection. Many tuning enthusiasts often talk about it, but do not show what it actually involves. I wanted to show you the maps or a few maps related to component protection and explain them a bit so that you might understand what we are always talking about. I will show you everything in ECM Titanium. I could also show it in Winnells, but I believe ECM Titanium is a bit easier to understand for beginners. And especially for people who have absolutely no idea about chip tuning, it is even easier to understand. That's why. We will go into the program. There. I will show you a bit of the structure of ECM Titanium. Just for the beginning, I would say, maybe we will delve a bit more into this topic of ECM Titanium in the future. Maybe I'll show two or three things, which I think I actually wouldn't want to show on this channel because that is, let's say, I'll now show the structure here. We have here a control unit is always structured or a, a diesel control unit is always, or should we start like this? We have here a VW or T5. EDC. Send me to CP2. This is actually a common control unit. The uh, DC7 control unit from VW is actually always built pretty much the same. Accordingly, we have all the categories here. We have engine torque. These are all the core torque fields. Then we have the injection, which is about the fuel supply. Then the activations here we have in this case EGR. Often, for example, with all the gasoline engines. Sound tuning. This means a kind of overrun cutoff. Then there is often also a it is said that catalytic converter protection is not included here. Do we often have a switch here for max? And um, then we have here. Next we have the turbocharger. Here is the boost pressure. I don't need to say more about it. Then we have rail pressure. Again, I don't need to say more. And the limiters. Here there is often also a speed limiter. So, but we want to take care of components. Once we have here in the torque map, we have this component protection here regarding high altitude driving. So every time here we have at the top, at the top we have the vehicle's RPM. Here on the left of the scale, we have ambient pressure. That means here in the middle, everything we specify is torque. Um, when we have high altitude driving, the engine should always reduce power because it has too little boost pressure or insufficient air supply. Accordingly, the higher we drive, the less power. We are allowed to request when we are in this core field. And that's why most or many, what I often see when I look at some tuning is that the entire scale is simply increased. For example, we want to generate approximately 200, more, 200 meters more torque, then we can go here. If we now go to it, then we see the noticeable, substantial, and significant increase. This is the increase in percentage, but we slightly want it in absolute increase, I believe. So you can see it here once in large, then you see it completely, then we see here. We have a maximum increase of 200 Newton meters everywhere. This means we requested 200 nanotum at the lower end, but also at the upper end. Yes, that's half right, half wrong, or rather completely wrong. When doing such tuning regarding altitude driving, my absolute opinion is which areas should be changed. I'm doing this now as standard, don't be surprised. You only change the lower range. So, and then stop. You calculate how much torque you want, then you only increase it here. And if you want to generate maximum power, then at 4,000 revolutions. And you also have to calculate the difference again. But often you see such tunings where the range is simply increased across the board to Newton meter, XY, and altitude driving. Component protection is thus removed. So then we have such components. Protection core fields. So now I've got it. We see this more often. 
in the torque range, we often have this also with temperatures. I don't see any here right now, or actually here. Here we have one. So, but that's a poor map. Well, it's not a big deal. But um, here we also have, you can imagine it roughly like this. I should have picked a better example, but that's how it is now. Here, on the left, we have the RPM, which we can also adjust, but we don't want to do that now. And up here, we have the temperature. That means if we... Yes, we could change this as an example now, but we'll leave it. So, here, you see the maximum torque development during... This is now during starting, but the maximum... This is a crappy peak. I'll cut this out. I don't need it. No, in the torque map, but otherwise, if we now have torque during starting here, for example, for people who have it, there is a hot start fix. These are old EDC-16 control units. You would have to release the torque up here for the hot start. So the torque map is somewhat covered, but here we have other component protection maps. Aha, look, art. We have almost the same as with the torque, which I actually wanted to show, but now I'll demonstrate it using the injection. So at the top, we have the injection in millimeters per stroke. Then we have here on the left, we have the, the te maximum temperature. I assume that this here could be the intake air temperature, but yes, it is not exactly defined here. In Vinols, we would have defined it more precisely, but here, it only oh, says injection. Correction. You have to somewhat guess what it's about here. I assume it could be the intake air temperature, although that is also quite hot for intake air temperature. For oil temperature or coolant temperature, I find it too cold. Therefore, it could also be something else. And here I see the component protection. Then is the factor for percent. So one means 100%. 0 0.8 would mean 88%. This means if we request 60 per stroke and we have 100 nanospecies and days, it would only inject 88% of the specified injection quantity to prevent the temperature from increasing further. Yes, most people just do it like this, then we don't care. At what temperature do we have the maximum injection quantity? Um, yes, where was I exactly? We have the maximum injection quantity here. We also find exactly such cases regarding other temperatures. So this here is very likely to be the coolant temperature because you can already see that at 118 degrees it is regulated and at 128 degrees, we only have, in quotes, only 70% of the maximum injection quantity. I'm being attacked again. Unbelievable. Yes, we have the maximum injection quantities. I'll put this thing away. In between. To Italy. Another city. You see this. Quite often, just like that. Why they do it, I don't care. For me, it's inexplicable. I personally think like this, a component protection should always be present. No matter how you justify it to the customer. It's much worse to have to justify yourself when the car breaks down because there was no component protection when the thing just overheated. It doesn't benefit anyone, not just the file service. Most of the time you only get such files from some cheap file service from Romania or somewhere for about 20 euros and such things are removed so that the file service can simply have peace. In case the thing gets too hot or something like that. At least he doesn't get the statement that every car generates no power. And here we very likely have a component protection for exhaust temperature, I assume. But here you can see more effort is often made. For example, if you enter a 100 here, then you have an exhaust temperature of 100 on the scale on the left. And then this is, for example, reduced to just 0 
3%, lowered, not increased. You see this more often, but generally, what you see even more frequently is that the component protection is simply deactivated, allowing the maximum release of the injected fuel amount, which was previously defined, uh, regardless of the injection quantity or temperature. And uh, this is defined, for example, in the map. Then it is specified, okay, at the RPM and at the torque we are requesting, this and that injection quantity should be injected. So for example, if we tried here to inject 0.7 or 70%, it would then be from 71, 70 millimeters. Millimeters are per stroke. This here is a component related to boost pressure protection. Here we have ambient pressure at the top and RPM at the bottom. And here one would say, okay, we set the maximum if done correctly, you only increase it in the desired range. So, for example, I would personally say, okay, up to 900 millibars is acceptable. And then you increase it as you have calculated it. No. Some others, most people just increase it like that. That's simply what you see most often when you look at maps somewhere. Usually, vehicles have problems. Or let's say, often customers come to us and say, hey, I have a car that's not running properly. Can you take a look at it? Or I receive a file where someone says, hey, can you take a look at this? And then I often see repeatedly maps that simply go from bottom to top at maximum. We could have 255 here. And most people just copy that out and insert it everywhere. And then make a maximum increase of, for example, 200 millibar. So the boost pressure is increased by 200 millibar. Um, if you want to increase by 200 millibar, you do it in that area, but not in the entire map. Then the component protection for the boost pressure is gone. If you then have a high altitude drive, it's no longer there. The boost pressure simply tries to reach its maximum, which makes the turbocharger around the 30 to 40% more. And then the turbocharger simply bypasses. In the rail pressure map, we actually also have a map with fuel temperature. Maybe not in the engine control unit, but in some other control units. But I think we don't have it in this map. Yes, we do here at 120 and 150 degrees. If the fuel temperature becomes too high, the rail pressure is defined here. No one bothers with that. No one really makes the effort and it's just done generally. For example, they just generally input 1900. Most people just do it that way. I've never seen anyone make the effort to keep the component protection active with rail pressure. I think that's about it for this engine control unit for now. There are other components, protection maps. However, I believe that would be the main thing one could show. I don't want to go too deep into detail because we will soon be offering courses. Accordingly, you can then learn all of this. Maybe not everything, but the majority of it. Therefore, I want to keep it on YouTube. Not everything is presented publicly for everyone. I hope this was informative enough for everyone or for you. Some will understand more, others less. That is, of course, understandable. If you would like more of such explanatory videos in detail, then feel free to write in the comments what it should really be about. I can delve into specific topics or some topics more precisely and some topics less precisely because I don't want to reveal everything here. And yes, I hope you subscribe. Don't forget to activate the bell. I wish you a nice day. Toodle-oo.